something you can't discuss in Russia. This war is being lost. Putin thought that because Ukraine was a much smaller country, he could easily conquer and subjugate it. He's completely failed to do that. And that is an existential threat to Putin's continued reign. He's become ever more of an autocrat, ever more of a dictator. He has crushed all opposition movements, and now he's against the ropes. And this makes him even more dangerous than before. He's now threatening nuclear war, quite overtly threatening to drop a nuclear weapon on Ukraine. It would be the first time that's been done since Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that a nuclear weapon has been used in war, and it would be a terrifying step. You can bet your life that the children of oligarchs are not being sent to Ukraine. The children of Putin's cronies are not being sent to Ukraine. It's the more vulnerable people who he's picking on and forcing them to be cannon fodder for his imperial war. And what we're seeing among many of those people is resistance. We've seen one man set fire to himself. We've seen another man shoot the draft officer who is trying to force him and others to go to Ukraine. We're seeing many people standing up to this terrifying regime with great courage and saying, no, we will not go and fight your unnecessary war. We are not going to save your skin, Vladimir Putin. We're not going to bail you out politically by going into that cauldron of war and participating in the crimes against humanity that you have commissioned. So I'm calling on the Russian people to show an extraordinary degree of courage in resisting this despot, in standing up against this imperial warmonger who is dragging your country towards ruin who has dragged it into a completely unnecessary war of aggression against another state and is now losing that war. And in order to try to cover up his losses, is mobilizing huge numbers of people who do not want to fight there and forcing them to go and fight and take part in this crime against humanity in Ukraine. And vast numbers of people in Russia have shown that they don't want to do that. Huge numbers of men are fleeing, are trying to get out of the country so that they will not be called up, they will not be forced to go and fight. And we're beginning to see the kind of dissent in Russia that has been absent for a long time because of the brutal suppression of protest. And it takes a lot of courage, I recognise that. The penalties that this dictatorial regime imposes on people for protesting are very severe. But courage is always needed in these situations. And what we've seen throughout Russian history is a great deal of courage among dissenters. People need to stand up to this. The only solution to this problem is going to come from within Russia. It can't be imposed by outsiders. It has to be the Russian people standing up and revolting against this despotic imperial rule and seeking freedom for themselves as well as for the people of Ukraine. The media loves war. It loves the spectacle. It loves all the missiles, the fireworks, the big bangs, the explosions. Any human misery is good for journalism, and there's no greater misery than in war. And so they report war almost as if they're reporting a football match and they revel in it. I remember the point where I decided that I couldn't stay at the BBC any longer. I was working for the World Service and it was a quiet news day and we couldn't decide which headline to lead on. We had a few competing stories, but none of them were particularly good. Ten minutes before transmission, the studio doors fly open and the editor of the programme is there and he says, great, 110 dead in Sri Lanka. And that was the point where I thought, I don't belong here. So our role is not to celebrate war. Even when the Ukrainians are pushing back the Russians, I'm not throwing my hat in the air because I know that there's just more war, there's more killing, it's still continuing. It's the right way for the war to be going, but our role is to oppose war, is to prevent wars from happening in the first place. For a very long time, people of my political persuasion, we've been fighting imperial wars waged by the West. The invasion of Afghanistan, which some of us warned would only lead to disaster, and it did. It led only to disaster. The outrageous invasion of Iraq carried out by George Bush and Tony Blair. The Saudi attacks on Yemen, which are supported by the UK and US governments. All of these, we quite rightly 
continue to fight. But imperialism is not confined to the West. It's not the exclusive preserve of the West. It's true that most of the imperial wars of the past century or so have been launched by Western nations, particularly the US, often with the UK's backing. But in this case, we see an imperial war being launched by Russia. And our role on the left is to oppose imperialism in all its forms, regardless of who the perpetrator is. The principle always is solidarity with those who are being oppressed. So in this case, the people of Ukraine are being oppressed by Russia, so our solidarity must be with them. When the people of Iraq were being attacked by the US and the UK, our solidarity was with them. When the Palestinians are being oppressed by the Israeli government, our solidarity is with them. When the Jews were being oppressed by the Nazis, our solidarity is with them. Whatever the situation around the world is, you side against the oppressor and with the oppressed. That is the fundamental guiding principle of justice, and that is the principle that we on the left should stick with, regardless of the identity of the oppressor and the oppressed. At Double Down News, we oppose all war. We will never celebrate war. We will never treat it as being some fascinating football match with us sitting in the stalls eating popcorn. We're not like those scavenging media corporations which rub their hands with glee when conflict breaks out because they just see it as being good for generating an audience. Please support us through Patreon to try to do things differently.